judges and members of Congress. It should apply to the executive branch as well. And I, I think it shouldn't even be a controversial notion. He didn't bring up that specific piece of legislation. He, he did talk about his concern about the lawfare that's been waged against him, and we all know it. And I made the point in my introduction of him that it's backfired fantastically on the Democrat Party and the activists who are trying to use our judicial system uh, to exact political vendettas against the primary opponent that they have uh, for, for the control of the country. And what we've seen is outrageous, and we've also seen the polling and the fundraising and everything else go in the direction of the target. President Trump has set fundraising records. He raised $53 million in the first 24 hours after the, the verdict in that terrible, bogus trial in Manhattan. And I think that shows that people understand what's happening here. We also set fundraising records, and we've continued to. He's announced he's raised over $400 million since the verdict came down, and there's much more to come. And you know why? Because people see that that is a threat to our republic. They see that that's a threat to our system of justice, and they don't they, they want to push back. And so in many ways, President Trump has become a symbol of that, pushing back against corruption, the deep state, the, the weaponization of the judicial system. And that's a very encouraging development. So I, I think that uh, he made the point every time they indicted him, his polls went up. That's right, because people see exactly what's happening here. And we have to fix it. And we will. Does the former president give his endorsement to this leadership <coughs> team? And does he want you to continue to be the speaker after the November? He said very complimentary things about all of us. Uh, we had uh, sustained applause. He, he said, I'm doing a very good job. I mean, we're, we're grateful for that. Look, we have to have continuity and leadership. We have to have a plan, and it has to be very carefully uh, executed. Um, when, we, when he became president for the first time in, in 2017, I was a freshman in Congress at the time, and a lot of people on Capitol Hill didn't expect that that would be the eventuality. They didn't actually believe that we would have unified government where the Republican Party would control the White House, the Senate, and the House. And so we lost a few steps, frankly, in the beginning of that Congress, the 115th Congress, because the, the plan was not fully prepared and the implementation uh, lagged a little bit. We're not going to make that mistake again. And so what we're doing right now, you never put the cart before the horse, but we have to plan uh, to lead because there's so many problems to fix. And so we're working through that right now. I spend a lot of time talking with President Trump about um, what happens after. Uh, the, the election, and we have to do that. It's our responsibility. I'll be with him again in Mar-a-Lago on Monday. We'll be talking about more of this and, and some of the races out there. He's excited. We're excited. We, we really think this will happen. So it's a good working relationship. Yes, sir. Trump brought up abortion that um, Republicans just, you've encouraged Republicans to support exceptions for rape, incest, left the mother. Is that something that Republicans should be getting behind um, on those exceptions? Well, uh, President Trump, the way he addressed the issue this morning uh, is he said, make sure that you, you exercise your own conscience, to talk about it, share your conviction, and, um, and, and do that uh, in a way that makes sense to people. And, uh, and I think uh, he had made a good point. He, he has said that after the Dobbs decision that um, the, the states are handling the issue right now, and that's where he's comfortable keeping it. And, uh, you know, we've made the point that before you can have political consensus on a, on a difficult issue, you have to have cultural consensus. And, and right now, we just don't have the numbers in Congress to do anything on the federal level, and that's just the reality. I mean, to get 60 votes in the Senate on, on something would be a great challenge. So we don't uh, sacrifice any core principle. We all believe in the sanctity of human life, and everyone has to go to their districts and explain it in, in their own way. And the President Trump encouraged everyone to do that. I think that's important. Another question? <laughs> Sorry, one, one more question yeah. on the endorsement front. There's some number of incumbents in that room who Trump is endorsed against. Two come to mind: Dave Newhouse right. and Bob Good. How frustrating is it to see the leader of the party, who you all agree is unified with the party, still taking shots at members who you have to defend? Well, look, President Trump has been a great partner overall and has endorsed, I think, his record. I think it's 285 to zero in candidates that he supported. And so um, he's been very helpful to us. He's, he's worked uh, uh, along the way. And look, as the speaker, uh, my job is to protect all the incumbents, and I'm out doing that to uh, the best of my ability. And uh, each, races of these, uh, each one of these races are individual, and, um, and they're going to be determined by the people on the ground. So our, our incumbents are out running the, the best races they can, and, and I think they'll all perform well in the end. So thank you all. We appreciate the time.